Like, share, subscribe, support the show in any way that you can. Today we have a special treat. Um, it's been uh, rumored. Uh, there's been uh, wars and rumors of wars. And then there's been wars and rumors of Russell Brand's live stream. It's called... It's called Stay Free. Um, I, I don't know if that's in, in, uh, relation to his sponsor or, or he's just that forward thinking. S stay free with Russell Brand. It's the only podcast with wings. Um, <laughs> it is, this is exactly it. It's a maxi pad brand. He's British. He may not know. I can't, they have to have stay free in, in England, don't they? Really? Don't they have to stay, maybe stay free. Oi. Maybe they're called Oi, stay free, right? It's stay free, right? <laughs> Okay, hey, at least we can count on freshness and absorption from Russell Brand's podcast. By the way, while it's starting, see the see the wood pile behind it. He's he's branding. He's keeping on brand. And then of course, uh, pink and light blue, because he's always a baby and uh, of mixed gender. I don't know. And then the the ragged live stream starting soon in in um like that glitchy old school eight millimeter uh, or uh, like high eight video writing to let you know that he's, this is underground, bruh. So we're doing three brands at once. And then there's a, a, a ticker tape thing or a little, uh, this thing. And then it just, and then it just warbles a weird noise at you, which I suppose is his meditation noise that he plays at live events. I bet you anything. Listen. Oh, and then just start. Hold on. It does that for a few minutes. Stay free. Maxi pads for a new universe. Okay, hold on. I've got to turn the audio up a touch, I think. Okay, he bought a theme song from someplace, so I got to cover it up. So he already put Liz Truss in there. There's the United Kingdom. Pfizer, obviously. Trump and Putin together. Him on a morning show. Bill Gates who's evil, end of the world, him on a panel, riots, what it's really about, where he's from, this is his house. Welcome on in to Russell's live stream. Here we are on Stay Free with me, Russell Brand. As we get to see the unedited, edited, re-edited, up-edited, edit version. Oh no, that's my remote control, I need that. You know, like... Uh, and he's, he's smoking weed right out of the gate. Is that... Is that brand marker number seven? The reasons it's okay. Oh, uh, you got to know I'm okay, right? Because I smoke weed, so I must be peaceful. Yeah, come get a young Putin. Thanks, man. The reason we're here is because um, on this platform... Did he just call that guy young Putin? Oh, no, he's that's a match. Okay. Um, what He calls one of his staff young Putin? We can speak freely. Now, hold on. You know, like, uh, one of the reasons, it's okay. Yeah, come get a young Putin. Thanks, man. Yeah, he calls that guy on staff young Putin for some fucking reason. The reason we're here is because um, on this platform, we can speak freely. Now, we, of course, use that freedom of speech to spread love and truth and unity. And uh, yes, uh, you know, by bringing on people who say that uh, there's an us and there's a them. And the them are trying to murder you. And no one can be trusted. And uh, basically, it's like Logan's run for the mind. And uh, in particular, to tell you stories that you won't get anywhere else. The mainstream media. <laughs> and give you phones you won't get from anywhere else. Well, thanks, Putin. Uh, he calls... Like, um, it's not actual Putin. He just looks a lot like Putin <laughs> when he was young. No thank you to Putin. The last thing we want is Armageddon. In fact, that's one of the things we're going to be talking about in the... First of all... What's his real fucking name? Say his real fucking name, you rich bastard. <clears throat> show today and in the coming shows as we enter into a phase of brinkmanship in this war in Europe. You know, what Brink brinkmanship? 
Is that anything like Vankmanship? You mean Brinksmanship? What games are they playing with our lives? Thank yeah, well, it's like they're juggling our lives in the middle of this, you know, and it's all big game, in it? Thanks for watching us. If you're in New York City, it's sort of noon. In LA, it's 9am. In the UK, it's 5pm. Or you could be watching this on Rumble Catch Up and you're completely free to watch it at any time. No one can control that question, really. No one, yes. No, the fucking big clock can't control you anymore. <laughs> You're free from the confines of, like, when I'm on live. You're not controlled by big times. In the show today is, is this the age of fake narratives and BS? Well, uh... Uh, judging from your backdrop and all your farcical, adorable, weird plot points, like there's a, this is the clock for where it really is, is like three symbols, there's another, that's New York, because New York and London matter, but like, these other two, I've got it's like a time thing underneath them, get it, because it's like spiritual, it's Jesus times for some people, and it's like Russell time all the time, every time. Marty. Distractions, yeah, that's sort of what we're asking. Like, Are your hands in your back pocket or did your mic pack fall down your ass? I suppose the reason we're asking that is that if you glance at the news on any given day... Yes, and that's what Russell does, he glances at the news. Because if you read the actual news, your narrative might eat shit. You're forced to vacillate between stories that are kind of terrifying like potentially sabotaged pipelines and threats of nuclear... I don't know why, sorry, potentially sabotaged pipelines are not storylines that terrify me. These stories, him talking about and others, like Jimmy Dore and others, trying to turn this into a World War III moment, n not so much. Like that, they, they seem to be trying to, like, this should be terrifying and no one's terrified. Everybody just went, oh, pipeline got blown up. Who gives a fuck? War and then people are playing football in space and there are Happy Meals available in McDonald's. Yeah, shouldn't it all come grinding to a halt? You know, there's like a guy with a pink corner of podium that he purchased off of eBay in a fake plank room he added to his million dollar house and he ordered a like this at one point they're like soldiers being castrated ukrainian soldiers being castrated on camera by russian uh wagner group mercenaries and on the other hand that was happening at the same time i was getting this fake neon sign made which is really led and much less expensive and not as hot so that's the how are you meant to get a grip on reality? How are you meant to find who you really are? How are you meant to find your place in the world? What? Okay, first of all, if I go, I don't pick my place in the world based on world happenings. What part do I play in the, in the breaking up of a pipeline or perhaps, shut the fuck up. Principles and values and what meaning are you meant to pursue in this world? And don't, don't try not to notice that I'm standing behind a little preacher-like podium we got from an old Catholic church. That's not manipulative at all. But yes, welcome to the Russell Brand Salon. Um, we're a bit full up at the moment. We're not taking walk-ins. If you'd like to sit in our aromatherapy chamber, um, you can get in line to not have your hair washed <laughs> through the other door. It's the only salon where you come in and you leave looking like you did. You come right in, we do nothing, and you fuck off. We don't wash your hair, we don't clean it, we don't cut it, we don't style it, we just get it wet and then you leave. We throw water on you. <laughs> and we hate big tech, that's why I'm using a sure microphone and uh, I've got a laptop, you know, one of Bill Gates's machines right there, that's a PC laptop, that's run with Windows. That's what that's one of that's putting money in Bill Gates's pocket right there. Unless someone can convince me that this arsehole was running his laptop on on what Linux. He's using fucking Linux now, is he? So well, today we're talking to a former MI5 agent, a real life spy. 
uh, MI5 before they upgraded to MI6. So he's like four. He's like one full Janigo. Yeah, that's how I see her as a real life. That's his sound effects box. Life spy. That's the way I understand. Is that a guitar? That's it. Well, <clears throat> it's a brilliant piece. I, in many ways, I see myself as the new Philip Glass. I'm an experimental musician. Ding, 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 oh, ding, right. ding, ding. That's uh, his. Uh, isn't that the guy that played Jeffrey Dahmer? Uh, is that that's his sidekick? So this is I don't know who this guy is. This is sidekick number one. Um, and that he presumably has a name as well. I'm gonna doubt we're gonna hear it because Ricky, yeah, because Ricky, because uh, Russell doesn't give a rat fuck about anybody but himself. Very good. That's my mouth. <laughs> Amazing. It's a mouth sound that I'm using. Gareth Roy is the producer of the show. Hello? Oh, yeah. Gareth. Gareth. Is that Gareth or Garrett? Pronounced Gareth because you don't give a fuck? It's weird that I sort of addressed that to you. Yes, it is Gareth. Pronounced uh, with two Fs at the end because, you know, I'm street like that. Mm. It's like I'm telling you who you are. Yeah. Some people believe... <laughs> oh that there is one consciousness and we are all expressions of it. So when you're looking into someone's eyes, you're looking back into yourself. What an egomaniacal slice of dog shit. You know, what I like about other people is when I look at them, I always see me. When I'm looking in your eyes, I'm seeing my reflection. Like basically, that's why I only talk to people with brown eyes because it's a clear reflection. Sometimes blue, you can't really see me as well. <laughs> like an asshole. What is this entity of consciousness that we participate in? And surely, on some level as individuals and collectively, we have to connect with something essential if we are to overcome these atrophying systems that seem to be bringing us towards destruction. Or we're all one and these are reflections of yourself and these atrophying systems, Russell, are actually a direct reflection because when you look out at the world, you see atrophying systems. So perhaps that is the you that you're putting out into the universe because that is what you are seeing reflected back. I don't look around and see atrophying systems. <laughs> do, do you think this asshole even realizes how much he's telling about his own psychology and his own like self-involved ego, uh, egomaniacal bullshit? That's something you won't hear on the main mainstream media isn't it gareth no you won't hear that on the mainstream media because people would tune out and they wouldn't be able to sell toilet paper so they'd probably get cancelled you know this is not the mainstream <laughs> what this isn't mainstream media this go. is some news real news elon musk this is real news elon musk who's uh, going to be coming on this show pretty soon elon musk is what a shock reviving his deal to buy twitter because he can't get out of it that's what he's doing he's revived it he is also amazingly dominating the mainstream media mar uh, narrative with every single tweet he makes every single tweet he makes is magic isn't i don't know how much i can handle with this i don't know i don't know when the when the jump off point is. Every single tweet leads to yep, news. That was a police reference that flopped. Does. And the, the press is saying this is Elon Musk caving to Twitter's legal demands. But the thing is, was it always part of his plan? That's, That's what, we'll what never you know. can't know with. What do you, let us know in the comments, let us know in the chat. Is this? Yeah, fill up our chat with your thoughts so that we get artificially constructed clickbaity fucking things. Part of Musk's master plan or do you think that Musk is being... Yes, this was the master plan. To uh, make an offer to buy Twitter, uh, decide it was a bad... Watch your, your stock and your other company go down because of it, and then try to get out by claiming it's overrun with bots and that Twitter is lying about the fact that it's 80% bots or some bullshit, and then going, ah, fuck it, I'll buy it anyways. Brilliant. So, so your whole plan was to buy something that had a fairly good reputation tarnish the reputation, and then what, sue to buy it at a smaller amount because of that. You were going to try to get a price cut once you'd already made the deal, and then it didn't work, so now you're going to pay full price when, if he'd had just decided today to buy it, 
he'd uh, it saved himself like ten billion dollars. Yeah, it's a great plan. Terrific. Fifth level chess. Being so sort of contained. And do you think that there's something in the fact that his name is Musk mm. that that's Ah, oh. oh, it hurts. It hurts. Russell, do you think it's uh, uh, there's anything to your last name being brand, as in a heated up rod that sears the flesh of livestock before they're slaughtered? That's a powerful pheromonal entity that's difficult to understand. If you get a whiff of someone's musk, like, by God, will you know it? Yeah. I, I, all right. I don't know what the point is here, but it's gross. Isn't it? Because yeah. musk is, you know, when you smell something and you're simultaneously like, oh, <laughs> like, but you like it a bit. Like, oh, no. Go oh, no, that's no. <laughs> Give us oh. some examples. Uh, Come on. All right, I will. Yeah, okay. So now we know what they do when they cut away and they go, you say something like this. When they're doing his cut videos, this asshole is standing off camera going, cut. Say, give us an example and we'll cut, we'll add that to it and we'll cut out the part where I bail you out. Like sometimes I, I know you mean your own farts. <laughs> <laughs> I know you mean your own farts. I would, I would go a little further than that. <laughs> like for me, sometimes I'll smell something and I'm like, no, no, that's not right. <laughs> oh, oh, the bloody what? Oh, what? You don't you dare. Get out. Oh, like Holy shit. First of all, look at this, like, midday TV contrived pile of horse shit. I'm glad we stayed on this long. First of all, I have three lights. No, I have five lights. I have three lights on me and two that for the green screen to cut to help me cut me out. Because if I turn up, watch this. Hey, 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 Siri, punch out. Watch what happens around the edges of when it, see that? That's without the side lights. Now, the camera will start brightening back up but it doesn't it doesn't have that verb you know so um hey siri stream sorry to everybody at home done right so i have two lights over there that just point to the the green screen i needed that at one point because it was i was having like issues with crawling ants around the outside of me you know that that look so, all right so um so i have five fucking lights Let's go. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, I guess seven, eight. The, the I don't I don't count the chandelier. Nine will be over here, whatever the one's hitting him for right here that's off camera. And then this guy is running three laptops. And then they've got this system over here. There's two people. One person's, I guess, on their phone. One person over here. He's got a floor manager. He's got a fucking floor manager. Somebody who actually does the, like, we're going live in five, four, like, that whole shit. Like, he, look at this fucking production for one dude yammering for an hour. I, I mean, I, like, and, and what did we watch these people stand around and work for? And God bless him for just eating his money, I suppose. But, and I was absolutely right. This is like Anglican stolen from an old church let's buy that we'll use it like the thing so i can be both sacrilegious and start my own religion at the same thing um yeah if this was if joe biden stood in front of this it'd be like he's satan but it's russell so it's okay also uh the wood background stops right here um it's in his tudor house that he purchased the fucking ceiling full of Turd blossoms. I don't know what that is. Dried thistle. But yeah, so this is the studio where he's doing this thing from. They've got a tape down snake on the floor for his computer, power, and the audio. And uh, yeah, he just they, they just decided to go all in. Like that, you you know, maybe you go uh, dribble a bit. No, oh, oh, I'm disgusting. Oh, I'm disgusting. Okay, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. What a what a bloody hell's going on! Yeah. <laughs> Get out! Are you See? also proud of the thing that you've just done? <laughs> I'm, I stand bolt up right. What's that? Oh, that's disgusting. All right, I still don't know what the fuck he's talking about. 
When I spoke to Elon Musk on the phone, yeah. About that, the <laughs> first thing he said, he went, Russell Branding, and I went, Elon Musking. And I knew then we would be firm friends, and that's why he, he would come on the show. I don't, you don't want to bother someone if you've got a powerful friend. No. You don't want to bug them. Like, remember when Not you, the for example... Toll thing again. Yep, I ruined my friendship with Eckhart Toll. Eckhart Cartel is also coming to the show. I managed to win him back because he's very forgiving. If you're in touch with the limitless love of which the universe is founded. Yeah, you know what you know what kind of an asshole you have to be to upset Eckhart Tolle? Seriously. What kind of a like just lame self-involved bastard do you have to be to piss off Eckhart Tolle? Seriously. You can forgive someone if they ring him up the whole time, <laughs> innit? You yeah. can forgive him. Yeah. He's yeah. got to forgive people, hasn't he? I forgive you. That's right, he's eventually... He's got oh, yeah, he's not coming on the show now, so you're mocking him for being forgiving? Classy. Oh, yeah, if he's like Elon Musk, or... No, not Elon Musk. If I can't, I can't tell, he's like, fuck off! Like, yeah. you think, oh, this meditation ain't working, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. He's got to just go, oh, don't worry about it, mate. Yeah. yeah, so basically what you're saying is you can be the biggest prick in the world to him, and he's got to take it. <laughs> Classy. Ah, see, this is why the, the, this is why they, this is the beginning of the end. This is why they cut his shit down. And this is why he never live streamed on YouTube. That's why the live stream is only on Rumble. It's got to be it. some version of that. So Elon Musk, he is coming on the show. I mean, this is the thing, you know, like we're streaming every single day from five in my country. I don't know what it is in your country, but for one hour. But also on Stay Free AF, that's our members area. We do longer interviews. We've got my stand-up special. We've got loads of stuff. By the way, he got uh, whatever his podcast thing was that he was on Luminate, Luminary or something like that. Um, remember he used to brag, he would say that. He may still be on there, but it sounds like they booted him. And he had to just, or he chose to do the Steven Crowder thing. This is, by the way, um, this, remember how I said he was going to be hippie Alex Jones? That's what he's been shooting for. That's what this is about. This is about being hippie Alex Jones. And the hippie part is the wood and the fucking lighting a candle and the fucking fake flowers and all that kind of shit. And he's building his set and his setup, his follower people that will, that eventually there'll be a camera on three of the staffers. And th it will be, um, well, here, let me show you. Um, this is This is the business model. Um, only difference is, let's see, hold on, let me see here, da, da, da. turn this off. I mean, it's like a fucking, it's, it's like Steven Crowder is using a Snapchat filter. That's what this is. Yeah. The only thing is, is that Crowder has been doing it longer. Um, and this sets, they moved, I think. Um, and they they do their mud club thing that's for membership. And his stay free as fuck membership thing is built on the same fucking structure. I would not doubt that there's a company that arranges this kind of shit now. Somebody's figured this angle out. You know, yeah. Difference is he's sitting down, right? Because they do a, they've always done a longer show, but they do an hour on YouTube and then an hour on Mud Club. So they do a two hour show every day and then they shoot other shit and put it up like Russell did. Russell is basically looking at Steven Crowder money and Ben Shapiro money. Again, this, I mean, you could just fucking, um, the only real difference, um, let's see if I can find the, I mean, we've done Shapiro uh things before um but you can see from his clips um and by the way um yeah slightly different angles a little darker this is the dark deep dark by the way and ben shapiro is growing a beard because uh he's reclaiming masculinity um and he's wearing henley shirts and i think he's probably going to start working out and then uh, we're about this far away from uh, Ben Shapiro's own brand of creatine. So, same deal. Everybody's building the same fucking machine. Just, just saying. 
stuff on there and like that's where there'll be the longer form interviews of uh, like all of this kind of stuff so consider yeah oh man i got more of this and uh after that i got more of this and after that uh a couple more of these and then more of this consider joining that if you wanna if you've got time Listen, let me do the main mainstream news. In a minute in the show, we're going to be talking to you about some brilliant stuff about how political um, players from like yesteryear, like Madeleine Albright and Condoleezza Rice, who were sort of powerful statespeople in their time, are now sort of openly admitting in the sort of forum, admittedly, of masterclass, that the whole thing is a construct. Like I hear she's doing great work lately. Why, why are people bringing up people like Madeleine Albright and looking at... Yeah, Madeleine's dead. Like, we're being invited to believe that... that Mad hey, asshole, all societies are constructs. Of course they're fucking constructs and they require maintenance. The default for humans is not friendly. The default for humans, we, we, we didn't have like 3,000 years of fucking peace and then people formed governments and fucked the whole thing up. We didn't have, it. we didn't have a Atlantis, fuck Atlantis destroyed itself. Madeline Albright, God rest her soul, you know, she's no longer with us. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Claire. And Condoleezza Rock. And somebody, by the way, laughed class Listen. but the whole thing is a construct like we're being invited to believe that that madeline albright god rest her soul you know she's no longer with us and condoleezza right you hear that uh i don't know if they laughed at her being dead or the god rest her soul thing are uh, like exactly or or they in all fairness they could have been laughing at russell saying god rest her soul as a mockery of the very phrase examples of how women can make it in politics and the, and therefore progress is working things are going in the right direction that is one narrative that you could look to but yeah but is it really i mean since women have started you know, showing up in government, people like Hillary Clinton and uh, and Liz Truss and, you know, just chicks in general, things have really gone pretty badly. You know what I mean? Another narrative is both of these figures presided and governed over a time where like Iraqi people were needlessly killed based on stuff out of people's imagination, wasn't it? They imagined, oh, let's pretend Saddam Hussein's involved in 9-11. Right, bomb them, starve them. And like, it was all actually made up. So if we know that that stuff's made up now, what kind of questions does that lead us to ask with current conflicts, for example? Not that yeah, because not that, you know, I, I just think, you know, are the Ukrainians really fighting off the Russians? You, you do realize that in this analogy, which, by the way, as somebody who marched against the Iraq war and the Afghan war and the and the first fucking Iraq war under Bush senior, um, I at least had the freedom in my country to march against it and and be against it without fear of being thrown in jail. It's kind of a difference. Also, in uh, in your analogy, Russia's narrative about Ukraine and their desire to take Russia is the one with the yellow cake argument at this point. I'm not into conspiracy theories. What? Where's my bloody tinfoil hat? We, must, we should never have it more than a yard away. Should we? Paris. That's supposed to be his transition noise. Hilton says, yeah, I'll take that young Putin. Thanks, mate. He hasn't memorized the names of his staff yet. Uh, Paris Hilton says that seven pet psychics say her missing dog is still alive. Now, you might think that's stupid, mightn't you? Like, oh, seven pet psychics say her missing dog is still alive. That's actually as many mice as were tested upon for the latest booster shot. That's a lie. That's why he's saying this shit on Rumble. This is what got, him bo got his video booted. No, the ivermectin thing was got his video booted. Of the COVID-19. Actually, no, they tested that on eight mice. 
Oh, no, misinformation. That's why we're kicked off at YouTube. It's because of the misinformation. If I wear the tinfoil hat, that is sort of an acknowledgement that, you know, I only half mean it. So, uh, yeah, like, so Paris... Only half. Just the half that says don't get vaccinated. Hit on this dog, uh, hopefully it will get found. She says there she's talked to seven pet mediums, but I like to think of that as medium pets, and that's what, what she's talked to. What do you mean? He doesn't know what he means. He thinks reverting, reversing those words makes it funny. Like, she's talked to seven mediums. Have you ever met Kurt Metzger? Size pet. Did you guys, were you guys in the same writing class? <laughs> oh, like, like, that's a too little pet. Yeah. That's too big a pet, a gorilla, yeah. bloody mm. hell, chaos. Don't talk to them about it. No point having a tick as a pet, no. medium-sized pet. Oh, somebody kicked the camera. <laughs> that's a too little pet. Yeah. That's too big a pet, a gorilla. Yeah. Some, somebody's walking towards it, he's concerned. He glances out of his left uh, side. Bloody hell, chaos. Don't talk to them about it. No then... point having a tick as a pet, no. medium-sized pet. <laughs> I, I fucking told you, you're going to fucking kick it. And you fucking kicked it, you know? And do we go down? Are we still online? Are we still here? Are we still... Is everybody Maybe in? Maybe what, hamster, guinea pig? Maybe. What just fell down there? Does that affect our ability to broadcast? what I say? what I fucking say? What did I fucking say? It don't matter much. I just heard something sort of tumble over there and it went like that. You can still see us. Let, let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments <laughs> if the stream's still working. And let me know about those audio, audio. You've got staff, fucko. They know whether it's going out or not. Levels as well. Kendall Jenner subtly supports Jaden Smith walking out of Kanye West's Yeezy show. That's a potentially complex. All right. They're, they're adding this fucking like cutesy news. He's doing cutesy news at the top. Where the fuck does he actually get into whatever the story of this nonsense is? Oh, oh wait. Does he go to a... Like Condoleezza Rice and uh, Madeleine Albright's masterclass, where we're invited to look at them as two successful politicians, as statespeople that have overcome the odds to rise to position of power. It, you know, it sort of fetishizes the fact that Madeleine Albright's father uh, mentored Condoleezza Rice. I'd say what it really tells us is the differences between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party are pretty insignificant. Mm. Yeah. That's because Russell thinks a women's women's right to choose is insignificant. Uh, every vote counting um, is insignificant. Um, and also, fuck off, Brit. It's my system, not yours. And the millions of people died as a result of policies that they implemented and were behind. And isn't that the real story? How can you pretend for a minute that this is a masterclass to, to you know, that's literally the um, product that this is drawn from in how to be a good diplomat. Okay, so he's he's using the fact that there's a, ma there's a masterclass, a masterclass, there's a masterclass for both of these women on the same site. The Matt. When in reality, it's a, there's a very different story just a moment away. That's why the question of the show today is, is this the age of fake narratives and bullshit distractions? Yes, that would, that it, honestly, was that the first choice for the name of your show? Fucking hell. Let's um, have a look at this. Pay attention because it's sort of, it just casually talks about things like uh, there being an, an imaginary scenario where Saddam Hussein and Iraq were responsible for the 9-11 attacks. And it's just a, such a short period of time ago for us to already just think, oh, okay, we'll just accept the narratives now, shall we? No, we don't. In the current conversation. Nobody, nobody thinks, well, yeah, maybe they did have WMDs. Nobody thinks that. Conflict. You know, every time you even mention that, you have to say, of course, our sympathies lie with the people in Ukraine that are suffering. But what? But you'd be lying, so why bother? What happens is, is as happened around 9-11, that- Oh, I don't mind getting trolls, Andrea. Fear not. Um, tr by the way, welcome trolls. You guys, unlike Russell's show where they, you know, close their chat to members only, um, I, you know, I deal with the trolls as they come. So there you go. The understandable necessary sympathy for the victims of that tragedy and that terrorism were pushed to the forefront to stop you thinking about what was going on in the Middle East. There never were weapons of mass destruction. They knew there were no weapons of mass destruction. A war was implemented on the basis of weapons of mass destruction. Yeah, we know. Lots of us demonstrated against it. We voted for another president because that those choices would not be made going forward.
on the idea that we weren't going to go, we weren't going to get into these kind of situations. As a matter of fact, it was one of the reasons why the Republicans say that the Syrian red line that Obama put down, he didn't hold the red line. He just let him get away with it because Obama literally was more committed to not engaging in a long-term war than he was to that red line because of Iraq and Afghanistan. This is primarily what Thanks, this channel is about. Us having the ability to come. It's uh, it's uh, NAFA. Um, NATO, NATO around and find out. Is that what it is? An AFO? Okay. Communicate openly with one another to recognize that we're flawed and that we make mistakes, but at least we're not overtly and deliberately lying in order to implement hegemony, even if it requires genocide. I think that's what we're, we're trying to do, isn't it? No. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And also have a bit of a laugh. So it's time. Oh, by the way, his producer thinks that uh, we're supporting Ukraine because we're trying to institute hegemony and we don't care if there's a genocide in the process. Also, everything on Russell's desk uh, was made or um, uh, or fabricated or assembled in China. I can't see the brand on his laptop, but I'm going to I'm going to need proof at this point that it wasn't assembled with uh, Xinjiang slave labor. I am now for, here's the news. No, here's the effing news. Thank you for using Fox News. Here's the news. No, here's the fucking news. In a world beset with wars, founded on dubious motives. So they play one of his own fucking videos in the middle of this. And they go through this piece. Yeah, so they basically just play his clip for the day, and then they post the clip secondarily. And so these two women did a masterclass because uh, she was the first woman in the position and Condoleezza Rice was the first black woman in, in the position and pretty boy uh, hippie Alex Jones has never had a, a fucking speed bump in his life that he didn't make himself. And then we come back. Oh, oh wait a minute. That for women in the workplace. I don't think it, this can be seen as a victory for women in the workplace unless your workplace is Guantanamo Bay or the rubble of Baghdad and the victory includes dead children. But that's just what I think. Tell me what you think right now in the comments. Let this is very close, I would like to say, to... Um... I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Yeah. One second. I'm I'm scrolling. I'm speed scrolling through something. Hold on. I'm looking for something. Give me one second. I don't. Hold on. Hold on. Getting there. I think there might be one. I might be skipping past it because it might be a five second graphic. Hold on. Give me a second. God damn it. This is what happens when I have to do this live. If only I had a producer with a weird beard standing off camera looking all fucking sinister and angry that could cut this in later. But, you know, hope springs eternal. Also, um, one thing I have noticed that almost every referential, um, where the fuck, where the fuck is it? They have a, uh, you'll have to trust me on it and I'll have to find one at some point. I'll, I'll show you guys later. 
because I'm gonna. It doesn't happen all the time, I guess. But on Steven Crowder's show, they have this. Hold on. See if maybe somebody pulls clips that way. One second. Mm. It's on here. Hold on. Ah, hold pause. Look at that. Dude, it's right on the fucking note. It took me a minute. You guys got to you guys stick with me sometimes. But god damn it if I didn't find it. It's this it's a fucking like every fucking time. Every fucking time. Same fucking shtick. All right. Anyways, point proved. Let me know what you think in the chat. I'll be responding to you. Shut the fuck up. All right. Anyway, sorry. One more. Uh, I got to click on here and then move forward a little bit. And then Asta are doing a lot of thing. Hi. Down there. That's where you want the old pound. Danae Krah. The Bush family, Obama's Clintons, are all in this together. They've been working together from. Oh, he's reading comments now. Brilliant. Uh, 88 Clinton announces his ordered airstrikes against Iraq because it refused to cooperate with the United Nations weapons inspectors. Clinton says he did not have the support of key members of Congress who accused, yeah, you mean like Ron Paul? House of Representatives issued a report accusing Clinton of committing high crimes and misdemeanors related to the Monica Lewinsky scandal. At the time of the airstrikes, Iraq was resisting unfettered access by UN inspectors to its alleged operation to build weapons of mass destruction. After repeatedly refusing inspectors access to certain sites, Clinton resorted to airstrikes to compel Hussein to cooperate. Right. You like I should. Like Daniel Hale, for example, who's one of his revelations was 90% of airstrikes, drone strikes specifically in Afghanistan, did not kill their intended target. They killed someone else, 90%. And all the time we were sold the idea that these drone strikes are super efficient. And I okay, first of all, uh, drone strikes during the beginning of the Iraq and the Afghanistan war are not as precise as they are now. Uh, stop acting like the fucking calendar doesn't move forward or the clock doesn't move forward. Um, ninety percent of the time, your uh, maps on your cell phone didn't work early in Apple World. You know, in the first Apple Maps or Google Maps, and they got better and better and better over time. Now you can literally see right up to the fucking storefront. Your flip phone didn't even fucking have one. I suppose what this leads me to query is the legitimacy of at least the accepted U.S. stroke Western position on current conflicts. Oh, okay. So because 90% of drone strikes in the 90s, um, according to that dude, didn't hit their, their intended target, that in 20 fucking 22, uh, Ukraine probably has it coming. That's, that's the Russell Brand take. You're not inquiring about it. I don't think it's responsible. I'm not saying that I have a definitive opinion, of course. I no, I don't do definitive opinions. If I did those, I wouldn't make as much money. I don't, nor do I have um, insight. Nor do I fucking care, actually. I mean, to me, you know, a dead Russian soldier, a dead Ukrainian kid, it's a fucking difference. It's a human life, isn't it? You know? No one's really to blame. It's certainly not Putin's fault for sending that soldier in there. And it's certainly not that soldier's fault for killing the kid. And it's certainly not that soldier's fault for blowing himself up because he's never gotten any training. All I see are two dead bodies. Sites that, that other people don't have access to. I just feel as a general, um, as a general stance, discernment would have to be your position. Now, Madeleine Albright, she... Uh, uh, sadly, I guess I'm going to say, is no longer with us. You know, all of us expire. That is the nature of our kind. What kind of business interest did Madeleine Albright have, as well as being, of course, a glass ceiling smashing femme fatale Absolutely. girl boss? What other... Yeah, which is obviously where our trouble started. 
I take it back. It's not hippie Alex Jones. It's now th th today's segment is just going to be called like uh, hippie Rush Limbaugh. Uh, business interest did she have? Right. Well, this is from The Intercept. After leaving office, Albright followed the standard path of self-enrichment for figures with her pedigree. She founded the Albright Stonebridge Group, a global strategic advisory and commercial diplomacy firm and its partner firm, Albright Capital. Washington is full of such enterprises which allow former public officials to leverage their connections they made while espousing democracy and human rights for less rosy business ends. Among Albright Stonebridge's many clients is Pfizer. During the last years of her life, Albright was doggedly urging the Biden administration during the midst of the coronavirus pandemic to protect American intellectual property. So oh, yeah. Okay. See, you're not going to, you're, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree here, pal, because, uh, um, Russell doesn't think the the vaccine should be free. He thinks it's poison meant to kill you. So um, that's rough, isn't it? Um, thank you, Mr. Monster. <laughs> Bubble bunch. Uh, peace, peaceful Alicia, thank you so much. Uh, moved into a new home on the 1st, and today is my birthday. Happy birthday, peaceful Alicia. Uh, thanks, Pam. I love from the Facebook chat. Um, appreciate it a lot, a lot. Again, how do you, how do you square this circle? Because on the one hand, he's like, she's making money off of Pfizer and wanting to keep the Pfizer, uh, you know, keep Pfizer's profits by making sure that they don't, uh, make the vaccine generic right away. And this motherfucker's like, well, old poison's a generic, isn't it arsenic generic? And it's not good anyways. And if like, I've got... Besides, I own Pfizer stock. So it's very much she did, you know, profited and, and did well out of that. Uh, another one, Albright was a long-time brand ambassador for Herbal Life Nutrition, a dietary supplement company. According to the New York Post, she was paid $10 million for these efforts over six years. In a As an herbal life? For fuck's sake. So everyone, if you, if you know anybody who worked with herbal life, you're a, you're a criminal. You're, you're a war criminal. 2016 settlement with the Federal Trade Commission, Herb Life agreed to pay $200 million in response to charges that it deceived customers into participating as the dupes into a pyramid scheme. Ah, there, there you go. You go. That's oh, yeah. The truth. Uh, terrible. So let me get this straight. She coaxed people into participating in this. Oh, no, she wasn't part of it after a while. That was before then. Oh, okay. But like, so if you lead people in into an organization where you like use your standing in the, in the public eye to make people come to like, I don't know, like meditation retreats, and then you upsell them things at these medita meditation retreats. Oh, fuck. True nature of that power. Yeah. <laughs> and Russell looks like a Hal Sparks knockoff. I appreciate that. That's very sweet. I suppose this why well, it's interesting for us to be able to talk to someone like Annie Mashin, who's been on the inside of a deep state organization, if indeed you like that term, someone who Yeah, if you, it's yeah, I love that term. It lets me know you're an idiot. Who's worked for the MI5. I appreciate people who use the word deep state, because then I'm like, oh, I see. You're stupid. Real life spy. Ding, 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 ding. Noise that it makes. Like who's able to give us insight into the reality of those organizations because at the moment julian assange is still in prison edward snowden is exiled in russia not oh no 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 he's not exiled in russia he's become a citizen he's he, he's gonna go fight for the 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 further land the first place that he sought refuge obviously and this, these no, wait, wait, wait. At the moment julian assange is still in prison edward snowden is exiled in russia not the first place that he sought refuge no what what was the first place he sought refuge russell was it uh was it the cayman islands because he knew he'd be safe there was it uh um shit was was it like peter Thiel's yacht the the libertarian lady uh was it um, any number of Middle Eastern countries that we don't have extradition with? No. It was China, where he brought two laptops and left with one. And where did he go when he left? Where did Gr Glenn Greenwald and his cronies take him? They flew him to Russia and dropped him the fuck off, where he's been stuck ever since, or lived happily ever since. 
if he's fucking alive right now. Because unlike Steven Seagal, who showed up for his magic, you're a citizen now ceremony, Edward didn't. Obviously. And this, uh, these stories are ongoing because we live in a time of continual conflict. With yeah, unlike, I don't know, the 80s or the 90s or the 2000s or the 60s or the 70s or the 1800s. What the fuck are you talking about? There's seeming espionage and sabotage all around us. Is it? Oh, that was, oh, somebody kicked the wire before and made the camera blink. Yeah, he's surrounded by, I don't know which one of you fuckers to trust. Hey, we're gonna talk to Matt, um, we're gonna talk to Annie in a minute. For that, I wanna let you know that- Madam Annie, he almost said, we're gonna talk to Madeline Albright. He almost said they were gonna. We do podcast every week. I do a meditation one. Yes, are you feeling anxious and fearful about the end of the world? I don't know how that you, but I'll, it, it, that's, the, the fear is free. The, the meditation costs money. Stay awake. And it's called that even when I'm trying to get you to fall asleep. And if, as well as this show is available as a podcast, you can listen to it anywhere. <laughs> well, not anywhere. You can't listen to it in Russia. Well, maybe you can. I don't know. I don't know where your money's coming from. And I do subcutaneous, which is a replacement for Under the Skin, where we have a deep interview. So some of the stuff we stream on here, like conversation. Subcutaneous is now... Uh, okay, is Instead of under the skin, okay. With Eckhart Tolle coming up and Elon. <laughs> yeah, and uh, other people, uh, and e Elon Musk. Other people I've insulted the second I've seen them who still have to come on because I uh, only talk to people who aren't allowed to get mad. Elon Musk coming up. We stream about like 40 minutes of it, and then we do additional content with uh, with the guest um, on in Stay Free. Yeah, for on Stay Free which is a membership only service. Fuck you. Let me state this as unequivocally as I can. Russell Brand charges money to see the entire show of Stay Free. If that isn't on brand, I don't know what the fuck is. Holy shit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you anxious for free, and then I'm gonna charge money for meditation classes. I'm gonna, um, call my show Stay Free, and then I'm gonna charge money for it. Fuck you. I'm gonna build my like, little organic space, yeah? And, and then I'm gonna have an entire crew, like it's an afternoon television show on the BBC. free for 29.99 it's just, uh, but wait there's but wait there's more yeah there's free maxi pads for all the men 